All right, so here's the deal. So microwave oven transformer. I haphazardly threw, oh, I don't know, four turns of this old wire around there for a secondary. The primary is the original. Got a clamp on amp meter here. Got electric outlet there. <clears throat> Reason I'm making this video is because I'm uh, frustrated and fed up with dummies on YouTube showing everyone how to use microwave transformers for other purposes and everybody's doing it wrong so I'm no transformer expert but obviously I'm a little better than 99 out of 100 of them out there when it comes to this stuff so here's what I'm going to show you microwave oven transformers are designed to be ran wide open throttle when you turn on your microwave they're wide open throttle they are literally magnetically saturated and uh, the reason they do that is so that whether your house has a 110 volts or 125 volts or whatever you got 117 the output winding is going to stay constant because it's already this transformer is fully saturated some engineer somewhere <coughs> excuse me figured out a long time ago that if you're going to run a transformer wide open throttle you can underwind the primary and it becomes more efficient at wide open throttle and what I mean is with a heavy load microwaves anytime you push the power button it's on a heavy load full power 1000 watts 1500 watts whatever your transformer is designed for but the drawback to that is when you cut the secondary off here and you try to use it for something simple like these uh, four windings with four volts that are going to light up the filament in this radioactive tube in a minute what happens is it's super inefficient very inefficient and I will show you that right now so I'm going to plug this in maybe you can hear it humming maybe you can hear my smoke detector battery chirping can you hear it humming? Okay. And with nothing connected to the secondary here, it's drawing over 10 amps. 10 amps doing nothing. Nothing at all. So now I'm going to clip on, let me scoot this little radioactive tube over here. And yeah, it really is radioactive. So now I clip those on and look at that. Chirp. Now we've got four volts at five amps, and over here, still in the 10 amp plus range. So let's go over here, see what we get over here. Here we got five amps, five amps, four volts, and I'm not going to grab the voltmeter, you just have to trust me, that's yeah, four volts. Almost exactly four volts in five amps with over 10 amp draw. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fix this transformer. And I should say, with this thing humming and drawing over 10 amps, that primary winding is going to get hot. This whole transformer is going to get super hot. Putting a power correction, power fat, whatever, power correction capacitor on it, or a fan on it, or anything else you want to do is just asinine. This thing's drawing almost 11 amps to light a filament. It's going to get hot. It's going to cause trouble. Don't do it. The only reason you might want to use these... I'm going to unplug this. The only reason you might want to use these without fixing the primary winding would be to maybe a spot welder where you're only going to click on the primary side for a half a second at a time while you do spot welds. If you plan on using this for a battery charger or... Powering anything else secondary doesn't matter if you're <clears throat> if you're um, using it for a half a volt or 100 volts on the secondary. If you're not running it wide open throttle with a heavy load, it's going to overheat for no reason. And even if you do use it wide open throttle, 30 minutes, you know, having it run your tubes in a ham radio amplifier for the filaments or anything else like that. Leave it on, come back in a couple hours, you're gonna find smoke, fire, blown fuses, whatever. So 
I'm going to pause this video now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug this guy here. And this primary winding, you probably can't see it, but it just comes, it's just coming down here and goes around. I'm going to attach to here and add about 50 wraps, 40 to 50 wraps in the same direction as the primary to make this primary uh, longer, more windings, more what it should be for a normal transformer, not a saturated microwave transformer. And I don't have any magnet wire, so when I come back and you see it rewound, it's going to have, um, like I said, 40 to 50 wraps of just some common wire I have laying around, not magnet wire. And I'll have some wraps of this orange crap back on there to get my four volts for my tube. And you'll get to see the huge difference in the amount of power draw on the primary side. The transformer is not going to hum anymore. It's not going to get hot anymore. These windings, yeah, they're already hot. The windings aren't going to get hot. The tube's going to be lit up with four volts, five amps, but it's going to work right. So, Forget about the 100 odd number other videos you've seen telling you to just wrap a secondary. You have to finish the primary to make this a proper transformer. You're going to have to add 40, 45, 50 wraps of magnet wire in the same direction. On this particular transformer, it's going to be going down and in and back out the top. Anyways, I'll be back in a few minutes. And you will see that video or this video continue. Boy, I can't believe all the dummies out there. Really pisses me off. People spreading misinformation and having people do effed up shit. And they want to act like they're experts. When I'm the expert. <laughs> I'll be back. Alright, I'm back. So... To continue what I was saying in the beginning of the video, these microwave oven transformers are designed to run full blast in a microwave. They're not designed to have a secondary for any other purpose than high voltage with the load. And because of that, it saturates the transformer and, <clears throat> in layman's terms, regulates the power going to the tube in the microwave. Anyways, this primary winding does not have enough windings to use for anything other than full throttle microwave cooking. So what I've done is this tab here with that copper wire going around here to the back, which you probably can't see, I just added onto it. I didn't have any magnet wire, so I just used regular old wire. And I wound 40 turns on there in series in the same direction with the primary winding, just giving it a much bigger primary winding. So this um, primary winding probably had around 80 turns. I added 40 to it. Then the orange wire is the secondary, which is now putting out four volts at five amps into this tube, four volts at five amps. And the primary side is now using 1.3 amps, okay? So on primary side using around one amp, secondary side using a little over five amps. It doesn't hum anymore at all. No noise, no heat. I can disconnect the uh, tube here. No humming, no nothing. Let's see the current draw now is down to instead of 1.3, it's down to 1.1. Much better than before. So for all the uh, hundreds, hundreds of other people on YouTube posting transformer videos, how to use a microwave oven transformer, don't do what they're doing. All you're gonna get is a super hot transformer using a lot of amps and getting hot and burning up. I see other dummies on here saying you gotta put a fan on them to keep them cool. It's not true. You have to extend the primary 40 turns at least for these to work properly. That is the correct way to rewind a microwave oven transformer.
put one last tidbit out here. Oh, let's do this. Let's see if this thing's got any power. Wow, look at that. Wow. Plenty of current on the secondary side. Plenty, plenty, plenty. Let's see what we get on the primary side if I do that. Are we ready here? Ready? Yeah. Looks like it went up to 4 amps at one time there. Anyways, a lot of sparks, lots of amperage. You can see that uh, it works. That made this wire warm for sure. But the transformer itself, it's not going to do anything.